Azamba provides training, support, implementation, and add-ons for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Sales CRM. With over 15 years of CRM experience, we offer fixed fee, fixed scope projects to get you up and running with CRM in as little as three weeks. And we back up all of our services with a 100% money back guarantee. Get more free training today at www.azamba.com training. Hi, my name is Gordon Shrink, and today we're going to be looking at how to import data into your new Dynamics system. So right now I'm currently in a demo environment. I'm looking at my active accounts and I have some sample data in here, but it's uh, it's time to get my own data, get my own customers in here and get that set up. So if I just travel to accounts here, uh, I have my accounts by default and you can see my view has the columns that represent the different fields. Uh, and that's what our template that we're going to be downloading is going to be based off of. Uh, so this is in my accounts. I could go to all accounts. It, it could be a little different here. My accounts is fine for this. So uh, if I go to Excel templates, I'll go to download template. And so what I'm about to show you is the, the first method of uh, downloading a template. There's another method too that I'll show you that has some different options. But from here, I can choose the entity. You can see because I have my active accounts on here, that's already selected here. But if I wanted to change it, I could from account to contact. So when you're just getting started with importing, we always recommend that you start with accounts first and contacts second. Uh, accounts being the companies, contacts being the people at those companies. And that's what we're going to be focusing on this video. So right now we have the account entity. We have my active accounts selected as a view that shows the fields. If I wanted to change a couple of these, I can just click on edit columns here. And I can manually select which ones I wanted or even didn't want. If I'm not going to be adding address, I can just unselect that here. So we'll go ahead and download this. All right, and so one of the disadvantages of this method, as you can see, is uh, that sample data I have is, is in here already. And I don't want to just delete these fields outright before I do this one thing. Uh, you'll notice right now that it starts with column D, and there's actually a few hidden columns here. We'll go ahead and unhide those. If I, uh, if I right click on the edge here and then go down to unhide, you can see I have these fields and this is actually the uh, the GUID or the unique identifier. That's how it knows, the system knows which records these really are. Uh, so if I changed every single piece of information here, it would still know that it was originally this uh, AdventureWorks. If I re-upload this as is, I can just change the information and it will update each of these individual records. In my case, um, I want to create all new records or import all new records. And this might be totally blank. If you don't have any information in your system, that's great. You can, you can ignore that. You don't have to worry about A, B, and C columns. Um, this is only if there's already data in here. But I'm going to go ahead and just clear this out. And then if I have a spreadsheet with my own data, I can put it on here myself. And I actually have one prepared. All right, we don't have too much information here, but we have enough to get started here for, for our needs. So a couple of important things to, to talk about when you're putting together this spreadsheet, there's some best practices that we like to recommend. Uh, the first one is the formatting of the phone numbers. It's always best to have the same formatting for the entire form here. So for example, I don't want to mix, uh, uh, I don't want to mix a phone number without symbols with phone numbers that do have symbols, phone numbers with or without area codes. If possible, it's best to go through 
and it can take some time, but it's always best to go through, get all that formatting the same with all of your records. It'll make it much more easier to import. It'll be less prone for something to go wrong during that import. The second important thing to do is to manually scrub your data for duplicate records, uh, whether they are records with the same account name that's already in your system or the same account name that's on your list. And we'll be looking at how to set up those duplicate data rules when we're ready to import. If I go back into my system and I go to the gear and I click advanced settings, it'll take me to the back end here. And then I can click the down arrow and go to data management. And here you can see I have a item duplicate detection rules. If I go ahead and click on that, I can see how my system is identifying what a duplicate record is. So right now I have a bunch of rules in here that are in here by default. Accounts with the same account name, accounts with the same email address, accounts with the same phone number, et cetera, et cetera. This is how it's checking to see if you have duplicate records. And if I don't want some of these options, I can turn them off by checkboxing and then clicking on publish here. The third thing you want to keep in mind is avoiding importing data that you don't want to use. So for example, I have Edapita here and I do have an address column for the city, but if my team doesn't need this field, that's fine. I can just leave it blank. I, uh, I shouldn't be taking the time to enter data that no one's ever going to need in practice. So I'm not, I'm only going to. I'm only gonna add the information that's essential for my salespeople. It's account name, phone number, primary contact, fax number. And the last recommendation is don't import record types if you don't have to. So when we're starting, like I said, we strongly recommend doing accounts first and contacts second. Your company might not benefit from importing a bunch of old outdated opportunities or huge lead lists that have gone stale. I think the question to ask is, can your sales team get away with manually adding just a few opportunities that they're currently working on? You should definitely consider starting out simple and then add more record types after your team gets used to the system. So now I have my upload template and we're ready to put this in the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this document. And the important thing to note is you can uh, save it as a uh, regular Excel file That would be the XLSX, or you can save it as a, an XML or a CSV. Uh, typically my suggestion is if you are editing the data, you should be editing existing records. You should be saving it as an XLSX and uploading it as such. If you're uploading brand new data, I would recommend doing it as an XML. It's more, it's less likely that something will go wrong in the import process if you do it like this, but otherwise either option is fine. I'm going to click on XLSX and hit save. Now I'm going to go back to my system here. I'm going to click on the meatball menu. That's the three dots here. And I can click on import from Excel for just a regular Excel file, the XLSX, or I can click this arrow to either import as a CSV or as an XML. Uh, the menu is going to look basically the same anyway. I'll select my file. And I can set the default owner if none is selected for these files. And I'll just go ahead and leave that as system administrator and hit next. And it'll give me the option to turn those duplicate data settings on. And uh, I will not allow duplicates. That's fine. Uh, I also have this option to review mapping. We're going to go ahead and click on that. All right, and so now we can see some of those options here. Uh, this part's actually kind of important. So it will link what it shows the uh, columns on the sheet. As you can see, those are the ones up on top here in the dark blue to the equivalent fields inside of the system. And it will try to guess if it doesn't know. 
and you can see fax number and that was a column that i made myself and uh, so there's no mapping for that but we want that mapped so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to go ahead and find the equivalent field in dynamics fax all right the other thing that we want to do is unlink the contact data that's the primary contact uh, we want to unlink it because the primary contact does not exist in the system yet. And that's ignored. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click finish import. I'll confirm. All right, so when that's imported, you can also see this track progress option. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. We can leave the page because it'll open it in a new window anyway. So here it'll show you a list of your imports that you're currently working on. And here's the one that we have going on right now. Uh, this can take a while to go through and the more records there are, the, um, the more time it will take. So we're just gonna give this some time to get ready to parse it out and complete the data import. If you do have errors that will show up on this error column, it's common uh, for errors to happen. So don't don't uh, be too worried if it does. We'll show you what to do about those. Uh, there can also be partial failures, which typically means the account record was created, but maybe some of the information wasn't moved over. So while we're waiting for this, let's go ahead and look at this one I did earlier with an error. I'll click on that. It has some details about the upload itself, and I can also look at what were the failures, successes, and partial failures. Uh, since we only have the one failed, I'll look at that. Okay, and so in this situation, the lookup reference could not be resolved. And that is because I tried to fill the primary contact field before a primary contact existed. And you can see here, it even tells you what row it is on your spreadsheet so you can reference it easily. And it'll give you some additional information on the source row here. All right, so while we were waiting, it looks like my upload went well. They both went in fine. If I click on that and look at the successes, I can see the imported records. I can click into one of these. And it'll pull up my record here. So after we do this and we're ready to import the contacts, we really just follow the exact same process. I'll go to my contacts and I'll click on Excel templates download template and follow these same process with all of my contacts at those companies. Hi everyone, just wanted to quickly let you know that if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this training, uh, we got a ton more over at azamba.com slash training. There will be a link to our sister website, Discover Dynamics. We have training videos, we have quizzes, we have supplemental downloads for administrators as well as sales end users. And right now we have a free introductory course on there. If you want to try it out for free, just head over to wizamba.com training. Thank you very much. Until next time.